Please open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. Uh, my title of the message this morning is Trusting God in a Dead End. Trusting God in a Dead End. Before we start reading, we live in a day age when we, there's a lot of things that are changing rapidly, very quickly. And sometimes it's kind of uh, very hard to stop and to focus. And I think this morning, aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord? I am. I hope you have a desire to be in the house of the Lord. I don't think there's a better place to be on a Sunday morning to be in the Lord's house. And I think it's very important from all of the distractions we have and all our worries at home about our children and about school and all the uh, situations that happen around the world, it's very important to come to the house of God to listen to what he has prepared for us. And even in church, Satan is not asleep. He's very actively working to distract us, to focus on our notes, to focus on our instruments, and to focus on our toddlers. If we have kids, and I have three of my own, and they can, all my attention can be focused trying to keep him quiet, and we miss the mo most important is God's word. So this morning, if we have our Bibles open to Exodus chapter 14, we're going to look at a passage or several passages of the story of Israelites. God wants you and I to trust in him in a very difficult situation. And looking at the life of the Israelites, we see how God tested them. So our first passage is Exodus chapter 13. Previously, we see that the God directs the Israelites to a certain place. Not only he gives them direction, after that, God is disappointed in Israelites, the choices they start making. And at the end results, we see God's deliverance for the Israelites. So in verses 17 and 18, we see in 13, Then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God did not lead them by the way of the land of Philistines, although that was near. God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. Verse 18, So God led the people around by the, by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up according to the ranks out of the land of Egypt. So we see that God takes Israelites. We know the, the story of all the ten plagues and the, all the miracles and how God showed the power. And he brings them out. And he says, you're going to go this way. There's a shorter route. It's an easier route, closer to the Mediterranean Sea. But I don't want you to go that way. And the reason why is because you're not ready. You're not ready to fight the battle. You're not equipped. There's Philistines waiting for you. And if you're going to go, he knows the future. What are they going to say in their hearts? We are not ready to fight. They're afraid. Lest perhaps the people change their minds. And when they will see war, when they're going to see soldiers, when they're going to see an army, they're going to turn around and go back to where they came from. So God knows the hearts. He knows their future. And he says, I'm going to take you a different route. So he says, go to a different place. Not only we see that, um, that he tells them to go to a different place, he guides them. In verses 20, we see that um, God gives them a direction and a specific guide. And you know what those are? Two pillars. One in the day, and the second one is at night. The one in the day, it was a cloud, a pillar of cloud that would guide them. And the question we ask, well, why was it a cloud? Couldn't it be a, a bird or some animal or something that could have been easier to navigate? And we have to consider that God is so caring. He loves his people so much that he gives them a cloud because protection of the sun. If you guys ever went hiking or out in the desert for a long period of time under the sun, you get very hot and exhausted. And you start drinking a lot of water. Well, you know the Israelites were hiking or journeying in this desert. And if, if you imagine there was no clouds, if there was nothing above between them and the sun, they would probably get very exhausted. So God thought about that, and he gave them a pillar of a cloud. And at night, also, a fire. We understand that fire is a good thing, a bad thing. That was a direction of light for them to follow. And then we also see not only God provide that, he says that once you get there, I want you to camp out. Settle in. Just camp out for a little bit. So we see God gives directions for the Israelites. And we come to verse, chapter 14, verse 3. For Pharaoh will say the children of Israel, they will be bewildered by the land. The wilderness has closed them in. Then I will, be, 
Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them, and I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. So God sends them to this place by the Red Sea, and now Pharaoh, he probably had spies, he probably had people looking out for the nation of Israel. Where are they going? And I have to recall that there wasn't just 600 um, people, it was plus children and, and, and women. So averagely, if you give two children per family, you're looking over two million people. That's a lot of people. And so God sends them to this location, and now he's going to bring something out of good. Pharaoh looks over and says, they're lost. Why would they even go to that Red Sea? They seem they're not, they don't know what they're doing. And so he's taking this opportunity to say, I'm going to revenge. Now they're in the desert. They have nowhere to go. He gets an army, and he's going to go and get them. He's going to go and try to destroy this, the people that once were serving him. And we come into our passage that I want to put, focus our attention shortly this morning. God's disappointment in Israel. Look what happens. Once they come there, the, Israel, uh, the, uh, the, the Egyptians, the soldiers, the Pharaoh gets an army and he goes to get them. And in verse 11, we see, And they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Have you, have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone? That we may serve the Egyptians. These are some very sad words. They tell him, Moses, we told you so. We, you came out. You brought us out here so we can die. We have now soldiers coming. We have people coming to destroy us. And now we see a sea. We're in dead end. What do we do? What do we do in a difficult situation where we're coming to a point in our lives that we don't know what direction to take? We have an army coming here to take our lives. And then we have the water. Either we're going to drown here or we're going to be uh, killed by the sword. And we're lost. And the people of Israel, is, Israel, they are discouraged. They're disappointed. They're very easily moved by the, outs um, the, out um, the outcomes or the circumstances they are. They're influencers, the decisions. The Israelites lose their sight and they fail to trust in God. What do you do in this situation? Living in a time like these now, some of you might be facing in a dead end. Some of us might be in a very critical situation and we don't know what to do. When it comes to different choices of school, I want to use this opportunity. If this is not the, the situation that's happening right now, but this is the time, like never before, to pull your kids out of the public schools, the government schools. The indoctrinations that's happening in the schools there, and we're thinking that it's okay. When is enough is enough? One professor said this. If our schools were teaching you 2 plus 2 equals 7, then George Washington wasn't the president of the United States. He was the president of England. What if there was something else saying that um, turtles are faster than cheetahs? We as parents were like, of course, no, that's false. That's not true. But you know what they're teaching? God is irrelevant. God does not exist. Same-sex marriage is okay. You choose your identity. And there's, well, that, that's, that's fine. When is going to be enough is enough. God has instructed us as parents and the church to guide and to teach our children in the next generation. The Israelites are in despair. They don't know what to do. They're lost, and they're calling out Moses. You brought us, and they're blaming him for the choice that he made and what God made. That was their mistake. And what Moses does, does he starts rebuking them, starts arguing with them, starts trying to change their character. Listen what he says in verse 13. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians who you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. 
Let God fight our battle for us. Let God deliver us. And in verse 16, 17, we see the deliverance. But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go and, on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I indeed will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army. And I'm not going to read the rest of the passage. But as soon as they saw the water depart, the Israelites, they saw that God has given them deliverance. And they went forward. They started going. And it's so interesting, this, this uh, miracle that's happened. The water departs on both sides, on the right and the left side. And they're walking. And now the Egyptians, the army is going against them. And we read that because they're on chariots, which is much faster than on foot and on cattle and other things that they had possessions. Two million plus people versus 600 of how fast they're moving. God stops their wheels or um, gives some kind of hindrance or something. Their wheels are not working properly. That's a very interesting detail. He slows down so they can get across this whole part from uh, this point through the crossing the Red Sea. And then the waters close. And we see the deliverance. The Lord will fight your battle for you if you trust in him. If God brought us this far in life, we can see he's going... Uh, what, we're, what we see in this world, he's going to bring something good out of it. If God brought our church and Christians this far in life, that means he has a purpose. And if we lose sight, if we start looking at all the things in the world and getting distracted, we might forget the most important. Trusting in his promises. Trusting in God's word. And the passage I want to leave this morning and we'll be closing in prayer it's written in Psalm chapter, Psalm chapter 46, verse, uh, verse 10 and 11. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with you. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Be still and know that I am God. God told the Israelites, be still. Hold your peace. All the commotion, just stop and focus on me. We see that Jesus Christ, he died on the cross for our sins. He finished his, his, his race. And the disciples, they lost sight. They lost hope. They didn't know what to do. And sometimes we do the same thing. The circumstances around us, the things that happen we lose the most important, our sight and focus on Jesus Christ. My challenge for you this morning, to put your trust in God's word. Not into material things. Not into someone. Not into something. But put your trust in Jesus Christ. Because in his word, we will have the promise that he has given to us. And he will be faithful. Be still and know that I am God. I will exalt among the nations. God will prevail. He will win. And so that is something that we need to remind ourselves. Let us, let us come to the Lord in prayer. Let's thank God for this opportunity. And if you're struggling with trusting God, fall on your knees, cry out to Him, Lord, help me to trust you. I'm speaking this to myself. There's times that I'm lacking trust. But I have something very critical for every Christian is to come to Him and to call out to the name of the Lord and say, Lord, Help me to have faith in you in this time of age we live. Let us pray. Amen.